make good decals in Roblox? That's a question I get asked very often. So today I'll be showing you how to make good decals for Theme Park Tycoon 2 and Roblox for absolutely free. All you need to have is a computer and that's literally it. Now for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to do this all in a program called paint.net. You can find a download link for that down below if you'd like to get it. You don't have to pay for it at all. Although of course you can, you know, do this in other programs such as Photoshop and any other free programs or paid programs that are out there. A lot of the stuff that I showed today will also be applicable to those programs. So, you know, feel free to just take what you get from this video and move it into those programs. So if you haven't already downloaded paint.net, you can go download it using the link down in the description. And what you want to do is just choose this one right here. You can get it through the Microsoft Store, but it is paid and it's basically the same thing anyway. So once you click on this button right here, it may pop up with an ad. You just need to skip that and then you just need to download it using this little button right here. And once it's downloaded, you'll get a zip folder like this. You just need to drag this application file right here out into your downloads folder and then you can run it and install paint.net. Okay, and once you've actually opened paint.net, we're going to go through a couple of simple things right here. So if you already know how to use paint.net, you can skip this section using the chapters down in the little like, you know, search bar below. So first of all, make sure you've got all of your tabs right here toggled. You've got tools, you've got history, layers and colors, which you can see have all popped up here. Feel free to move those around wherever you want. I'm just going to move mine around like so, so that you can easily see them, but it's up to you completely where you put these. In the middle right here, this white box right here is your canvas or what you're working on basically. So anything you want to do needs to be on this white square right here. Down in our toolbar, we can see there's absolutely tons of things right here. There's tons of tools, which I'll explain as we go along, but it does kind of say what they are. It gives you a bit of an idea when you hover over them, but we'll go a bit more into those as we go along. Of course, you've got your color tab right here. I recommend clicking more and it gives you a couple different options. If that does scare you, then feel free to click less, but this just gives you some more options. And then layers are pretty self-explanatory. Once you add a new layer, you can actually add stuff onto this layer right here and you can toggle that on and off without affecting this bottom layer right here. And finally, you've got your history tab right here. I don't use this very much, but it's just good to kind of go back on yourself right here and, you know, without having to undo a thousand times. And speaking of undoing, you can actually undo stuff up here. You can redo stuff. You can paste, copy, a crop, you know. So that's the very basics done. Now, how does this all translate into Roblox right here? Now, for this example right here, I'm going to be doing this with Theme Park Tycoon 2 because, of course, that's what my channel's about and that's what I relate to the most, I guess. But it depends on what you're using and you can just apply this to whatever size you want. Now, to work out the size of the canvas that you want, you need to first work out the aspect ratio. Now, this basically just means how much wider is it than how tall it is or how much taller is it than how wide it is. Now, this would be an aspect ratio of one to one because both the width and the height are the exact same. This though, for example, would be an aspect ratio of two to one because the width is twice as long as the actual height. Now, it really depends what game you're playing. Some games will actually have like wikis where you can search up the sizes. For example, I know Welcome to Blocksburg has a wiki where it shows most of the actual painting sizes and stuff like that. But in Theme Park Tycoon 2, we don't really have something like that as far as I know. But most of the sizes are pretty obvious. I don't know the exact aspect ratio of them. No one does really, except from Dennis. But now we've gone through all of that, I guess I should actually explain, you know, how that actually helps us right here. So if we go up into our image tab up here in the top left, you can see that we can actually resize and we can change the canvas size right here. Now the difference is, is that resize will change the size of everything on your like canvas right here. So it'll change the actual, you know, everything on here. It'll just make it bigger or wider or taller. Whereas canvas size will just extend the canvas and make it bigger, but everything will stay in the same place. So for example here, if I just paint this square black, but I do this with a canvas size right here and change this to 1000 by 1000, you'll see that the black isn't actually extended. Our canvas just gets bigger. And it's the exact opposite with resize because if we actually change this to 1000 here and resize, you can see the entire thing has been stretched out so that it actually, you know, is 1000 by 1000 instead of just making the canvas bigger. So what we need to do before we do anything is decide what the size of our canvas is going to be. Now, just to make this a little bit simple, what I'm going to do is make our canvas a one-to-one -one ratio or in other words what I'm going to do right here is just click on resize and I'm going to set this as 1000 by 1000 right here. You can also just create a new canvas by clicking new and you can just set those in here like so. If we click OK you can see we've been given a brand new canvas right here which is 1000 by 1000. Now what I actually recommend doing right here in all cases is just going to our magic wand right here which basically our magic wand will just grab anything that is basically the same color right here. So for example if we just click on this white, it will select all of 
the white you can tell it's been selected because there's this jagged line going around this little like spinning line going around and the entire thing's turned blue and then if i just click my delete button you can see it's just gotten rid of all of that white right there so it's all now transparent you can tell it's actually transparent because it's got this checkerboard pattern right here which is also a bit of a tip for whenever you're looking for actual pngs they will have this checkerboard pattern like this because they are pngs they are transparent just like our canvas is now transparent and now this is where we can actually properly start to make our you know decal or image right here so for this example right here i'm not going to be making anything you know too advanced obviously i could go on forever and say this is how you do this and this and this and this but there's other tutorials online which go a bit more in advance and i mean if you guys enjoy this video and we get a load of likes on it then i may go into more advanced stuff and i may actually carry on and go into some more advanced stuff in another video but today i'm just going to show you the simple basics and you can learn from there or i'll do another video at some point so firstly something important to know is down here you've got your shapes tab now you can get all of these lovely shapes right here and you can change whether they are just M whether they are just like a line like so or whether they're filled in or whether they're filled in with an outline you can also change the actual width of the brush right here which will change the size of the outline you can change the style you can change all this stuff right here although i would recommend not going into this you know too early on if you're not sure what you're doing and another thing to point out right here is this is your primary color and if we just click on this here this is your secondary color now this is actually important for when we're drawing our shape right here because if i just draw a square for example and just make this border a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better you can see that it's put our primary out on the edge and it's put our secondary on in the middle and if we change this to red and we change this to green we've got something really ugly but <laughs> you could also see how that actually works right here and this is just kind of helpful for in general sort of stuff you know then you've got your text tool right here now this is obviously pretty easy to get you go into your text tool right here you've got an absolutely bunch of fonts right here tons of fonts to choose from and of course you can download more if you'd like you can actually change the size of the font right here you can make this as big as you want uh you don't have to you know do it with the sizes that are actually on here although obviously most of the time you'll be sticking on these sizes right here you can make it bold italics underline you can strike through you can change the rendering thing but i wouldn't mess around with that and you can see how it aligns so if i just type in a hello right here you can see we can make some changes right here you know we can make it bolder we can make it center align which means that it will just align differently a couple more important tools that you should probably know of of course is the paintbrush you need to know about your paintbrush you can change the hardness and this basically determines how actually you know rigid at the edge of the brush is right here if you change this down to zero you can see you've got a very fuzzy brush right here and it kind of is soft on the edges whereas if you put the hardness all the way up you can see it's very thick and you can go in between and get a bit of an in between right here as you can see you've got three different brushes there with you know just that one brush of course you've got your eraser right here which you just need to hold down your mouse button right here and you can just go over it and it'll erase stuff your paint bucket which you know surprisingly fills stuff in <laughs> and then the final thing to go through here which is a little bit more advanced but i still think it's important to go through right here is that you actually have a bit of a selection tool right here now this means that if for example i just get a bit of a brush in right here and we just get like some you know some some stuff in like so i can actually take a selection out of that and i can move it out using this one right here and i can move that wherever i can rotate it around i can resize it i can do whatever i want with it and it's quite helpful you know to just move stuff around if you don't like where things are oh and one last thing that i did forget to mention which is kind of important is that we have our line tool here as well which is very helpful because when we actually do this first of all we can make these into arrows if we'd like or something like that but also if you use these little joints right here you can actually twist and turn our like line right here so it's not just a straight line of course and you know you can also undo it to just go back to that straight line anyway that's basically everything that you need to know right here now so what we're going to do first of all is let's say we want to make a bit of an entrance sign that says hello welcome to my park or something like that so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get my text tool and i'm going to choose a font that I like. I normally use a font called Gilroy right here. It's just a nice, you know, all around good font right here. Gilroy Extra Bold. Although, of course, use whichever font you like. And now we can just type out something like welcome or something like that. We can change the size to whatever size we need, not zero because that's not a size. Uh, we can just change the size to whatever we'd like right here and we can make that font a little bit bigger. And there we go. We've now got our welcome text. Now, a way to make sure that this is actually centered is if you just grab these right here and bring it to the edges, you can look down in the very bottom left right here and you can see how big your selection is so we can see that this is 78 wide right here so if this is not 78 wide which it is not we can just move that over just a little bit using our arrow keys right here and that'll just bring that into the center and now layers are your friend they make everything so much easier especially if you want to change things up and all you basically need to do is add a new layer clicking this button right here and you can bring 
that layer up and down as you can see on this little menu right here if we for example have the layer above it it will look like this but if i move the layer below it it will then go behind it so then let's say that we want to have a square underneath this right here which kind of you know welcomes you in or whatever what i'm going to do is i'm just going to have this fill in like so and there you go you've now got a square behind it now i wouldn't recommend having a bright red thing because that's a bit in your face but you can change it to like a white or you can change it to uh, not black i guess but like a gray or whatever color you want and of course you can just choose whichever color you want using this little wheel right here now all of this stuff is quite advanced and i'm not going to go through it in today's video although like i said i may go through it in another video and you can also see that some of these are slightly transparent now that's quite you know useful and quite interesting because that means that say you have like a black wall and we have like a transparent white thing it you will still be able to see the black behind it but it will kind of look like a glass sign or something like that so that's quite interesting and it can you know give some interesting you know ideas i guess so there we go we've actually got a bit of a glass sign like so but obviously glass signs don't just hover so what we want to do is add a bit of detail on now what i'm going to do first of all here is i'm going to add some screws in because of course this will be screwed in in some places wouldn't it now google is your friend you will find so many so many good photos on google you will also find so much absolute shit on google as well but you will also find some really useful photos on google and if you have a subscription to some sort of photo website you know like shutterstock or something like that feel free to use that but I just use Google. Everything's on there. Even if it is a bit harder to find high quality stuff, it's free. So, you know. So what I'm going to search right here is like a screw PNG. Now we want to have PNG in that because that means it will be transparent. And if we just search in right here, you can see already our first one right here is quite a useful one. However, it is not transparent. Now, a lot of PNG websites do this really annoying thing where you actually have to go onto their website and download it straight from their website like so, which in some cases is a good thing to do to be fair because that means that you'll get a very high quality photo some png websites will be even more irritating and they'll make it look like a png when it's not actually a png and you can tell it's not a png because it has this sort of png thing in the actual i guess preview right here whereas if it's a real png we can actually click on it and you'll see it'll pop up after a little bit even though it's not transparent on this right here another little tip to make sure that you get high quality photos right here is you can go into tools and you can go into size and put it on large which means that you will only get images that are quite high quality you know but anyway this one right here seems pretty good so i'm going to download this one right here and i'm going to get that into paint on it in just a second how do you do that you may ask well you can just drag the photo over right here and bring it up to here and you can either add it as a layer on top of this current image or just open the image which is what i recommend doing now you can see this image is a little bit blurry which isn't ideal but hey it's going to be quite small so you know can't complain we can resize this obviously by using our resize tool if we do we click this little button right here it means that it will maintain aspect ratio and it won't stretch it so we can just bring this down to about 100 maybe and you just basically want to keep on experimenting and see well that's far too big you know so it's not going to work but what we can do is just hold down shift and drag on one of these pieces right here and that will actually allow us to just you know make it a little bit smaller and then if we zoom in we can drag these in like so make it just a little bit smaller and drag that into wherever we want it but yeah that's most of what i'm going to show you in paint.net today because obviously i can't show you how to do absolutely everything everything in this program you need to actually you know go on yourself and work some stuff out yourself and you know <laughs> tailor it to your own experience and to what you actually need but once we've got this right here what we can do is just go into our save right here if we just click save as and once we just uh, choose a folder let's say our pictures right here what we can actually do is save this as a paint.net which is basically a save file now this will save with all of these three layers right here it won't remove those layers whereas if we save it as you know a png or a jpeg or something like that it will remove those but this will save it with those layers so you can come back into paint.net on a later day and edit it so i recommend saving this right here i'm just going to save this as sign you know save or something like that and then we can go back onto save as right here and just say save this as a sign we can just go into png because we want this to be transparent you can do it as a jpeg if you don't want it to be transparent but i normally just use pngs because that's always quite good you know and if we just save that right here we've now got an actual png which is transparent and we can place in the game basically but before we do so we want to go onto our roblox page right here and actually upload the decal because you can't just magically bring it into a game so what we want to do right here is just go into our create tab by clicking the little create button right here and into decals now this is where you can upload as many decals as you want for absolutely free at least you know as i'm saying this and you can see i've uploaded many 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 decals that i've uploaded probably thousands and thousands of decals because they are really useful right here and quite easy to upload all you need to do right here is just click choose file show all 
files if you're on Opera. It will depend, you know, what program you're using right here. And there it is, sign.png, which we can just bring this in here. We can rename it to whatever we want. I'm just going to rename mine sign. Well, not really rename it, but keep it as the name sign. And then we can just click the upload button like so. Now, Roblox has a really crappy moderation system. So this will sit like this for a little while, but you can still see it in the game yourself. So what we're going to do is hop into your game of your choice. I'm going to go into Theme Park Tycoon 2 and we can actually put this sign in there. So now we're actually in the game right here. Now we're in Theme Park Tycoon 2. We can actually place down our image panel right here. Now the size that we actually use was obviously a one-to-one -one ratio or a square or whatever. So we could just use this image panel right here, which is also a square. We can place that down absolutely anywhere. And now if we go into this right here, go into change image and your decals, it should pop up right here as, you know, sign or something like that. Now, luckily, Roblox has actually already accepted it. I'm not sure why they're so fast today, but hey, we can now place this in like so. And if we go into our appearance and enable transparency, you can now see that we've got a transparent welcome sign. Now, obviously, there's some things that I changed right here. For example, there's just no shadow. It's just a flat, you know, white transparent thing. So it doesn't look exactly like glass. And, you know, not everything's perfect right here, but hey, it's not going to be perfect if you're going to be doing something simple. And honestly, for just a welcome sign like this, you're not going to notice much difference and it looks pretty good to be honest. But anyway guys that's all for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video and you found it very helpful and educational. If this video gets like let's say a hundred likes then I will do another one of these videos just going a bit more into depth and I'll show you a couple more things that you can do in paint.net and I guess I can also go into Photoshop and show you a couple things in Photoshop too. But anyway here's all my lovely channel members and Discord server boosters. Thank you so much for supporting me. I very very much appreciate it. You can become a member by clicking that little join button just down below. It's only 99p or $1.30 a month for the lowest option and you get early access to videos, shout outs and so so much more. So go check that out if you'd like to spawn me a little bit extra. Of course make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're reminded when I next upload. But except from that guys I hope you all have an absolutely lovely lovely day and I will see you all in another video. Goodbye!